He said, I want you to have a personal relationship with God. And the only way to do that is to get in His book. To get in His Word. To begin to feed upon that which God has preserved and given to us. So we find the serpent and Eve coming up with the first perversion. Yeah. The first perversion yeah. of the Bible. Yeah. And then He says this, And the serpent said to the woman, and we're in verse 4, Ye shall not surely... Ye shall not surely die. Uh-oh. But God said they would. But the serpent said they wouldn't. Amen? Many today condone the lifestyle of homosexuality. Yeah, but God said it's an abomination. Some of the newer Bibles that they've come out with, or whatever you want to call them, they may not say it's an abomination, but God's original Scripture, the thing that we've got the closest to the original text, says that homosexuality is an abomination to God. That's right. Amen? So he says, you shall not surely die, but listen, now he's going to add something to it here. And the servant said to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So we find the serpent, Satan, twisting the Word of God, perverting what God said. I'm telling you, he knows how important the Word of God is. Amen. When he came to Jesus in Matthew, the fourth chapter, let's see how he dealt with Jesus. Let's see what he said to him. The Bible says in Matthew 4 and 1, first book of the New Testament, it says in the first verse, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. When he had fasted 40 days, oh, we need to preach on fasting, Brother Bill. I don't see a whole lot of that going on anymore. Amen. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and I ain't just talking about y'all, I'm talking about me too. He was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, now how did he find that out? How did he find out that the Scripture proclaimed him to be the Son of God? Here we go, he's going back into the Word. We got Scripture quoting devils. Amen? Yeah. He knows the Bible better than you do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's been quoting it longer than you have. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I couldn't preach this morning. He said, If thou be the Son of God, I see the word had already established this, so we find him again attacking the word, and he'll be even more, he'll be even more blunt, more, more, you know, out here in a second. If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Oh, and listen to this. Don't miss this right here. This is what I want you to get this morning. And Jesus answered it now. We know how important we, that the devil thinks the Word of God is. Let's see how important Jesus says it is. In verse 4 it says, And He answered and said, It is written. Now see, He didn't do His... When the devil came to Him, He didn't do His Holy Ghost 2 dance. He didn't jump up and down with His lease. He didn't scream and holler at Him. He just said, You know, it is written. He's fixing to use the Word of God, the unchangeable, unmovable unstoppable, hallelujah, Word of God. Amen. He looks at the enemy and he said, it is written. Don't miss this. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You hear that? That's how important Jesus said the Word of God is. You live by it. The Bible says four times that the just shall live by faith. Then it tells us with the bill that faith cometh by hearing. Amen. And hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Amen? You cannot live spiritually. You cannot survive spiritually without the Word of God. Amen? And that's what Jesus is saying here. Not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. If your faith is built on the Word, the enemy knows this. If your faith is built upon the Word, as long as you continue to have your faith built on that solid foundation, then the gates of hell, every every scheme, every counsel, every plan, every manipulation, everything he comes against you with will not work because the gates of hell cannot prevail against the foundation of God's Word that you have built your life upon, that you have built your faith upon. There's only one way in these last days that we're not going to be deceived. Amen? And that is if we know the Word. Whatever that man out there in California, wherever he was from, whenever he said the rapture is going to take place on this day right here, if you knew the Word, then you would know that what he was saying was not correct. 
Because the Word says that no man knows the hour, no man knows the day when the Son of Man cometh. Amen? None of us know. So that whenever some of these preachers get on television before the thousands and they spew off their stupid mess, we should be able to say, hey, wait a minute, and don't line up with God's Word. And if it don't line up with God's Word, guess what? It ain't true. Amen? Because let God's Word be true and every man be a liar. The Word of God is, it is the only thing solid and, 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 and the only foundation that you can build upon today that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. The gates of hell can take you down if you're built on denominationalism. The gates of hell can take you down if you're built upon men's bylaws of the church. But the gates of hell cannot stand, cannot come against, cannot destroy your foundation if it's built on the Word of God. The enemy knows how important the Word of God is. Jesus tells us how important the Word of God is. And you can keep reading there. You know it as well as I do this morning. That whenever the devil would say things, Jesus would say, oh, it is written. Yeah. Amen? Cast yourself down. Surely the angels will catch you. He said that he, he gave his angels charge over you. Amen? That they'll bear you up if you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said, yeah, but it's written. See, he took it out of context. He wasn't talking about if you climb up on top of a mountain and jump off. He was talking about when things happen. When things overtake you. And Jesus looks at the lion serpent, the devil himself, and says, yeah, but it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen? He used the word in every situation. And so did the enemy. Because the enemy knew he would come at him and try to quote Scripture and take it out of context and twist it around and Jesus would just use the Word. Yeah. It'd do us good today that instead of throwing our temper tantrums and throwing our hissy fits in the face of the devil, we would just simply quote him a Scripture and go on. Yeah. Because i got news for you. God's Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away but my word shall remain. It was there in the beginning. It will be there in eternity, in eternity future. Amen? God's word is the only foundation that you can build your life upon, your faith upon, and be able to stand the storms of deceit and the wind of deceitful doctrine that is blowing in the land today. I've told you this before, and I don't just say this about other preachers. I say that about me. I say that about Brother Bill. If what we preach goes against this book, it ain't right. Amen? Because this is God's Word. He will never, ever, He will never, ever contradict it. He will never go against it. He is not a man that He should lie. His Word is the same forever. It is forever. His Word is spirit and life. That's what He told His disciples. You know, Jesus said... No man takes my life, but I lay it down freely. And he said, if I lay it down, I will take it back up again. And after he spoke that, there was not a devil in hell that could stop him from coming forth out of the tomb on the third day. Amen. Because once his word was spoken, uh -huh. that settled it. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. It was spoken it, just like God in the beginning said, let there be light. And there wasn't a devil anywhere that could stop that. Right. Some says the original Hebrew uh, uh, trend, the he, original Hebrew text said that God spoke and said, light be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what happened? Light was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that could stop it, Brother Bill, because once God's Word is spoken, it cannot be stopped. The gates of hell cannot prevail or overcome the Word of God. That's how I know this morning, even when I don't feel His Spirit, and I don't feel His Spirit every day. Amen? I don't know about you. There are times that I go through that I don't feel it running up and down my spine, amen, in goosebumps. But there are times when the enemy comes against me and he'll talk to me and say, oh yeah, do you know what? All things work together for my good. Not because I feel it, but because God's Word says so. Amen. I know that I'm saved today because I have called upon the name of the Lord. I have faith in Him. I know that my sins are forgiven because He said if I'll confess my sins, He is faithful and just to forgive my, me of my sins because my foundation of my faith is on the Word of God. Not my works. Not the things that I can do, but what He has already done and upon His Word. The only foundation that will be left remaining when the wind blows and everything comes crashing down around you, if you have your foundation, if it's the Word of God, if you have built upon that, Sister Nancy, then the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Amen? Amen. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. You can put your faith in a man and you will be highly disappointed. You can put your faith in a church and you will be highly disappointed. You can put your faith in a denomination and you will be highly disappointed. 
Oh, but you can put your faith in Jesus today. Amen. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. He will never let you down. Amen. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail. So we're talking this morning about how important the Word of God is. The enemy knows it. Jesus knew it. Yeah. Jesus knows it. God knows it. He tells us all the way from the front of the book to the back, even through all the writers. Mm -hmm. David says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. David says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So David knew how important the word was. Amen. Amen. The enemy knows it. God knows it. The only people who don't seem to know it is us. Amen. Amen. You might say to me, Oh, I know how important my Bible is. It saves my seat from one service to the next. Amen. It holds my papers down on my desk. Oh yeah, you really got the revelation there. God's Word is important for us today because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And the just shall live by faith. You can't have faith today without the Word of God because the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I can read you scripture after scripture that tells us, that points us to the fact that God's Word is the most important thing that you will ever read. I know everybody flocks to the bookstores as soon as one of the new books comes out by one of the Christian so-called leaders. Yeah. That, that, you know, they're books that are the best on the best-selling list, Time Magazine's best-selling list or whatever. But the most important book usually lays neglected in their homes. On the shelf. Amen. I was listening to a song the other day that we play over the station, Dust on the Bible, Dust on the Holy Word. Amen. Talking about how that he, he went to the neighbor's house and he saw all the magazines and everything. Went looking for a Bible. And when he found it, it was covered in dust. Mm -hmm. Didn't have time for the Bible because he was too busy with their nose stuck in the TV guide. Amen. I'm telling you, church, there's coming a time the Bible says that everything that can be shaken will be shook. And it would behoove every one of us today to search and make sure that our foundation is right because the storm's are coming. Yes. Storms are coming. Some of you out there in the sound of my voice, my radio, my internet are already being hit by storms. And a lot of us go through things. Amen. And the only thing that's going to help us to endure, the only thing that's going to cause us to remain is the Word of God. Amen. Building our faith, our life, our hopes, our dreams upon the Word of God. Amen. Jesus said it best. Man lives by every word. I don't know how I can tell you anymore today. How I, I'm at a loss for words when I try to tell you how important the Bible is. The Word of God. Whenever I try to tell you how important it is that you don't just come to church on Sunday morning and hear Brother Billy preach or come on Tuesday night and hear Brother Bill or Brother Mike or Brother Tyler or whoever we have preaching on Tuesday night and you just hear that and that's it and you just let the Bible lay the rest of the week. You need this every day. You need to feed upon God's Word. You need to know it for yourself. When the enemy comes to you, you don't need to be to, to sit there looking at him and say, well, Brother Billy said, like the men over there in the book of Acts that said in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, you know, we've heard about him from somebody else. No, you're going to have to know this for yourself and have it written on the tables of your heart to be able to withstand the storms that will try to shake your foundation. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against God's Word. Amen. Amen. And anyone that has built their life upon it. I talked to someone just recently. And like most of the church world, they were talking about how they were looking for different things in a church. And what they really were looking for was, you know, some people picking and playing the stuff and playing older music, you know. And they said something about our canned music that we use. Not being real. Amen. And I can't tell you that that didn't rub me the wrong way, but really what I came away from that thinking was that whenever people go looking for a church, they look for the wrong things. So many times people will say, well, I go to this church because of all the activities we've got going on. I go to this church because of all of the little clicks, you know, the little we've got this outreach and that outreach. We've got this going. That's why I go. 